memorable times were had by all at these occasions. Through his generosity in hosting these events, Milton helped to build a sense of common purpose within our community and to stimulate lasting personal friendships that will continue well beyond his passing. Milton was an inspiration, a pioneer, and an all-round nice guy. I will miss him greatly. So I'm uh, Sam Henderson. I worked with Milton for many years at Clinic Technology and have uh, continued to you know, have good time with him since uh, Blackie Martin brought up on the technology and the things like that. But uh, you know, the previous speakers have said a lot about Milton and his uh, leadership in technology and uh, science. Uh, he started out shortly after the laser was invented, just a number of years after the laser was invented, he started using it as a tool to make remote measurements at NASA. And then after doing it successfully at NASA, as Jim McGilver talked about it came from NOAA. And as uh, Mike Parsky's uh, commentary said, uh, he did a good job there leading a team of people. He's always left a, a wake of you know, excellent science and technology people behind him. He, he was a, a very good visionary uh, when working at NOAA. He saw that the uh, diode pump solid state lasers were coming out of the scene, which is more efficient than the laser. And he, he rapidly he noticed that he could actually build a company on building a lot of our systems using these diode pump solid state lasers. And he left NOAA in 1984 to found Murray Technologies. Shortly after that, he started hiring a few people. Uh, I met uh, Milton and Eva in early 1986. And Milton uh, got me to drink the water for wearing laser radar and using solid state lasers. Uh, since I knew a little bit about solid state lasers, Milton was actually interested in getting me to join the team. And that was uh, one of the most fortunate things that happened in my life. Uh, a funny story is that when I came for my job interview, Milton and Eva took me and Paul, my wife, to Flagstaff House. And Turns out that one of the few people that ever get food poisoned in Blackstaff House was me. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, was so intrigued by Milton's vision that I joined Corning Technologies anyway. Uh, his, like, as I mentioned, his, his vision was very motivating and infectious. And, uh, because of that, at Corning Technology, we were able to build a very strong team at, I don't even know how many, must have been 50 or 60 PhDs by the time it was done, and uh, a very strong international leadership. Uh, Milton was a very good listener, and one of his favorite management styles was walking from office to office just listening to people. And uh, he didn't, you know, he, he learned a lot, but he also would, would correct people that would get a little bit off track of what his vision was. Another funny event that I'll never forget is shortly after I joined Milton, we were still at Mitchell Lane here in Boulder, just a handful of people. We were taking one of our first business trips, and uh, as I was about to get in Milton's scout, I believe it was at the time, I don't think it was a Bronco, I think it was a scout. And uh, as, as I was about to get in, I remembered I'd forgotten something in my office. So I set my briefcase in, and I went back into the office. As I came back down the stairs in the office, I heard Milton revving his engine 
And as I stepped out the door, he was going forward and backward in the scout, trying to get over my briefcase. <laughs> and I destroyed a lot of stuff in my briefcase. <laughs> but we had a very successful trip to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. It actually started a lot of fun in the uh, Milton was very good at, especially in those early days, of actually you know, reaching out and, and knew so many people that you know, led us to be able to grow uh, slowly at first, but then more rapidly as time went on as we, we built the team. And by 2005, as many of you know, Milton had led us to uh, about 185 people and $30 million in revenues. And Lockheed Martin saw the technology that was being developed and acquired, acquiring technologies. Of many of the people are still working at Lockheed Martin for technologies. Again, Milton's left a lot of innovators and business people in his wake. He's, uh, there's half a dozen startups in Boulder that are a result of people that work you know, through the current technology experience. There's technical leaders, NASA, NCAR, NOAA, Raytheon, Ball Aerospace, you name it. We've had contact with Milton over the years. And one of the things that most impressed me about Milton was uh, from the very beginning, when I met him, he was always so generous. And there were times early in the CT where we didn't know if we could make payroll three months out. But if we had any profit, Milton took a huge percentage of that and gave it to the community. So, to conclude, I would say that, you know, Milton was certainly one of my greatest mentors, and, and I was very fortunate to cross paths with him. Um, I know he's in a better place. Thanks, Milton. Thank you.
<laughs> My friend Milt was a curious man who liked to learn new things. Our first bonding experience that I can recall was over a new recipe whose sauce was not coming together properly. We stood there and stirred and stirred and talked and became friends. One of our adventures had impacts for decades afterward. Mill thought that we should fly down south to experience a real crawfish boil. So my parents obtained 50 pounds of live crawfish and Milt and his friends flew a group of us down there to cook up this regional taste treat. Now that was the start of a good many visits between our families in Louisiana and Colorado. Milt came to love my mother's crawfish, shrimp, creole, and homemade cornbread. On return trips, the Huffakers once fixed up some fish for us from one of his Labor Day uh, Alaska fishing trips. Yum. He also flew us in his airplane for a steak lunch in Cheyenne, Wyoming. <laughs> and they introduced us to the joys of the Flagstaff House. Milt was not only curious, adventurous, and friendly, he was generous. I remember fondly when all of these qualities came together uh, during a, a church mission trip to a boys' orphanage in uh, Mexico. After doing the finishing work on a new medical clinic, Mill took all the boys, all the staff, and our volunteer group out for a game night at the Tecate equivalent of Dave and Buster's. Even work was fun with Milt. When our church organist wanted to put her personal organ up for sale, Milton even let them install it, this organ, in their living room so that it could be played and shown better. There were ranks of pipes everywhere. One evening, Milt, and I, Milt took the treble clef, I took the bass clef and the pedals, and we pieced together a Bach Toccata up there in Sugarloaf. Whether it was some messy sight reading or an elegant weekend of opera at the Met in New York City, Milt enjoyed music. Finally, Neva called a couple of weeks ago and asked me to translate what one of Milt's French professional colleagues had said to her in a note. He'd written that Milt had a joie de vivre. And I agree. Milt had a way of always finding ways to love life. Thank you, Milt, for showing us how it's done. My name is Jennifer, and I worked with Milton at Realizing Aptitude Foundation. Milton believed that all young people deserved an opportunity to know who they are and to find their life's work, something that brought them challenge, fulfillment, and joy. It was from this commitment to the next generation and his unwavering philanthropic efforts that he created Realizing Aptitudes, a foundation dedicated to helping youth realize their worth and guide them through self-discovery and taking the next steps on their career journey. I had the honor of knowing Milton and helping him build Realizing Aptitudes over the last seven years. Through this work, Milton invited myself and others to share in his passion and commitment to youth development. Each day, he inspired us to carry forward with his humor, stories, wisdom, and utter gentle kindness. One of my favorite memories of Milton is stopping by his office just to say hello, and I would wind up being in there for an hour, maybe longer, as he told me about weather patterns and planes, helicopters, um, really everything. Um, it was a very unique and wonderful experience to have a leader like that who not only took such a vested interest in me and who I am and what my aspirations are, but also to show up every day so present and so willing to share who he was with everybody. No matter what he was doing, you could always walk in and ask him a question, whether